as a businessman, Richard, does this does this cheer you? The, the <laughs> conversation we're having. Sarah, here? I feel like um, I feel like we've spent the last three years watching the cars go very, very slowly around <laughs> the scale electrics track, and I'm really worried we're going to have to watch them do another lap. Um, and that's my concern about this. Look, I, I voted to leave because um, I uh, believe in the opportunities that, that Brexit might give us. But it's become patently clear to me that parliamentarians are unable or indeed unwilling to actually put party politics aside, career ambition um, and ideology and actually compromise. They had their chance three times to lead us out of the darkness and to stop this paralysis but they failed, and it's appalling. The opportunity cost of Brexit, in, in my eyes, is now unacceptable. I care way more about runaway knife crime with serious incidents against my staff every single day. I care way more about universal health credit uh, with some of my customers struggling with mon monthly cash flows. Apparently, there's a climate emergency, according to Parliament, and yet the Environment Bill, which has been drafted since before Christmas, has just been put on ice. I, I even care more about insect decline than I do about Brexit. So to my mind, we, we, need to, we need to stop this paralysis. We need to break out of it because ultimately the government are not governing and they must do so. So my view is that now we know what the two choices are. That's the stone cold reality is it's either no deal or no Brexit because there is no other magical Brexit deal out there that can be had just with a bit more charisma. Um, so I think on that basis, at least the choices are clear, we should go back to the people and ask them. We started it with a referendum. I think we should probably finish it with a referendum. Aisha, do you agree with that? Um, yeah, I, I absolutely do agree.